bien. Euh, Thierry, Thierry, uh, Thierry la langue, having ça sera, uh, opted uh, for French, le français, I will go into a form of Esperanto, Esperanto which is uh, French, Esperanto. and will leave Esperanto where it is. You're quite right, it may be difficult to, to interpret. Et pour aider comme les and parce que pas déranger as I don't like to be unduly bothersome, Esperanto is a form of English which enables us to communicate even if it's outside of our culture and outside of sometimes our total grasp. Ladies and gentlemen, and more particularly dear friends, excellencies, and dear Thierry, I don't know how much time I've been given, but I'll certainly overshoot. But if you want me to stop, just say so. I would like to thank you, because first, it's always an opportunity to speak, not always a pleasure, but whenever you have the possibility of expressing oneself in difficult times such as today, it is a true present. So thank you for this present. And secondly, also a thank you, because it is in this hotel, which has been very close to my family some years ago, and where I found a number of friends, and in the refrigerator, uh, Tatinger champagne bottles. They were in the refrigerator and not extended to me. They must have made a mistake in the room. And also Rinard champagne. Well, that's very good, because it shows even amongst French, you can have a competition competition, which is the only means of being in a global, acceptable system. We're French, but it's not because we're French that everything has to be accepted. So Tatanger and Rinard, good luck. Tatanger certainly win because they're the best. And that's what counts. The third reason, which is a bit more prosaic, we are in difficult times, more particularly in France. And I would like to raise the French issues in simpler terms because having traveled extensively and still traveling extensively, right now we the French are the laughing stock on the fact we hadn't understood that an aging population meant that we had to pay a bit longer speaking in very practical terms. It's true that this is the case in France, but in other countries there are different situations. We each have our difficulties and our issues. We have ours. And those who give us lessons, I would personally tell them to clean up their own backyard. And we each have our problems. France has its problems, but always relating them to uh, our neighbors and not saying that these are our problems. And yet we live in a situation of globalization. And today, that's why I'd like to thank you, Thierry. Uh, having a breath of fresh air is extremely pleasant. And I'll go back to the battlefield on Monday with that much more strength. Thanks to all of you. This conference is on governance, global governance. I love the word global. Jean-Pierre Elkabach was opposite me, saying it is global, but global doesn't mean really very much. It just means we're all together. And yet we speak of globalization as if it were a new phenomenon. But don't worry, Jean-Pierre will speak about this later. But it is a true topic. Globalization does exist simply because we have wanted it, because globalization is democracy. Globalization is internet. Globalization is that everyone knows what is happening elsewhere. And those who want to go into globalization and to see it as a uh, uh, capitalist issue is something I don't understand in many countries where there was no democracy and no access to anything and when you explain globalization, say it's capitalization, it shows that no one has understood. 
Moi, pour moi, la mondialisation, c'est me, certes compliqué, et c'est une chance. Et en même temps, c'est une opportunité, une opportunité pour parler, de parler, de parler, de parler, de parler, de dialogue, de échanges. Et je ne sais pas d'autre façon de faire de la mondialisation, et certainement pas par le fait que la mondialisation that it is a large capital or uh, speaking of large corporations, uh, Exxon, Shell, BP, saying that is globalization, which is a misconception. So let's go beyond this. And if we understand we have no other option and that the real difficulties are to, is to make globalization a success and not a mistake, and that is not easy, but I'll be back to this. But starting out saying globalization equals super capitalism or unacceptability, and who to explain that to someone who is somewhere in Sudan or in Burma, I'm choosing these uh, randomly, or Iran, who have, someone who has uh, internet access and thus knows what is happening between the globalization. It's something we don't want to go back to a closed system and that what is better is to defend one's own interests. Well, I'm very sorry. I will not be party to such an approach. But, as always, what is important not the words, but the way in which words are used. And I say this because recently with a financial crisis, and which was, in fact, a true revolution, <coughs> but once again, I don't want to go into simple statements as I did in describing France. Of course, the Anglo-Saxon world was very present, but was ahead of its time. And in fact, if you're ahead of your time, you have to be brave enough to follow it up. But it came from them because they were ahead of everyone else. So when we spoke of a financial crisis or an economic crisis or an economic cycle, Personally, in speaking with all those that I have the opportunity to meet, it's not an economic crisis, it's not a cycle, it's a true revolution, a revolution in behavior, either accept it or you don't. But if we continue to simply say globalization equals capital and X equals uh, freedom, then I don't think we're on the right track. And thus, and that is what's of interest to me, I believe that large and small companies, and international companies, have a role to play, have the responsibility. You can't say that you're part of the system at the same time of doing nothing and of remaining mum and simply because you're a large company and at risk that you hide and say, well, there'll be another life, so to live happily, let's live discreetly. Personally, I think that the large companies and the smaller companies at the international level open a dialogue and a dialogue on governance. The theme of these uh, three days are precise, is precisely governance. And we are asking for governance because without governance, basically, we're at a loss because you can be told you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And my message then would be if there is a governance and that we take on its responsibility, then let's say what it is and take on board the responsibility. But we can't simply say that because you're large or almost rich, that would be another seminar, that we're not in corporate governance. That is something which is not true. It's unfortunately not very clear. And uh, governance is visibility, is forecasting and security. For those who think that we are against governance, I can assure you that for the ultra-capitalist that I am, thanks to governance, we're going to be able to live. And without governance, we find ourselves in a system which becomes extremely hard to manage.
And if there were a last message in explaining for those who don't want to accept that we can do it for moral reasons, for us, governance is a way of being protected against those who don't respect it and bind our backs because they're smaller or coming from other countries, new things which are totally unacceptable and because they are small and not from an OECD country, they can do it. This is something that we'll no longer accept, not in terms of equals, and often my words are misquoted when I said one day they no longer accept that we are not allowed to speak. This was transformed into the CEO of Total doesn't accept a different view than his own. On the contrary, what I'm saying is we need to be listened because we're also entitled to speak, and it's not because we're large and pseudo-rich that we're not allowed to speak. <coughs> we can't be asked to be responsible and at the same time remaining mum, or else then I don't understand the language anymore, but even changing languages, the issue would remain the same. And our approach vis-à-vis -vis the governance is who decides on it, who says what is right or wrong. And Jean-Pierre, I'm going to bother you once again in Esperanto, but this is a very serious subject. Where are the cowboys and Indians? Who are the Shiites, the Shunites, the Alawites, the Wahhabites, the Jews, the non-Jews, Semites? And so I'm saying this on purpose. Who decides what? Who has the right to say what is true or not true? Who can tell us this is good or this is not good? And if I ran a test and I know my Moroccan friends, they know very well what I mean. It's not that simple. But at the same time, globalization may contribute rather than becoming a difficulty. And of saying that because we are an oil company or not, but we are rich, etc., and that that is inappropriate. And I don't know for the cowboys or the Indians, incidentally. When I was little, I preferred the Indians, and I continue to prefer the Indians. But apparently, the cowboys are better, except when they're the cowboys. And, uh, for the interpreters, good luck. And even for French speakers, good luck. <laughs> In other words, good luck to all. But over time, we'll have the opportunity. Thierry has asked me to prepare a continuation to four or five years of visibility. And with what I'm doing, you've got at least five years of keynote speeches.